round two from the Ken Rosewell Arena on Fox Netball as these Swifts fans enjoy back-to-back -back home games as another rivalry reignites for season 2022. We have a look now, a reminder of how they'll line up. And we know the Swifts without two of their better players, Sam Wallace, season-ending injury. She's out. Also Paige Hadley with COVID. So Helen Housby shifts back to goal shooter. Kelly Singleton will start out the front. Maddie Proud, the captain in at wing attack. Taylor Fraser normally plays in that wing defence position. She's been given the start in the centre. Ali Smith up against her old club. And then I love the mix-up happening in the defence end here for the New South Wales with Sarah Clow and Maddie Turner in a little bit of a positional swap. O'Shaughnessy back from COVID. Sophie Fawn, she's the replacement player just this week for Sammy Wallace. And a special moment too for Mitch McBurney. We're celebrating men in netball this round. And he's going to be the ball deliverer for us today. So what a moment for him to be able to walk out and hand the ball to, there he is. Oh, I'm probably good thing he's got his mask on. He's not showing too many nerves at the moment. What an incredible moment for him. And part of the New South Wales mixed 10 a team about to head to nationals. But let's get back to the game at hand. And it's going to start through Kate Maloney. Oh, no issues on this centre pass. That's been the chat a lot of this week for the Melbourne Vixens. Already we're seeing a lot of body on the floor. So you saw Cloud go down just then, trying to block out um, Samerson out the front. But Kamwenda going in for her first shot. No nerves there. Well, interesting to hear you say that about Cloud being out on Samerson. I asked Bryony Akel if that was the reason for the mix of positions. And she said, no, she's just trying it, wanted to do it this season. But I reckon a lot of that is to try and match up on the strength of Samerson. Well, and we did see Turner have so many penalties last week. Maybe that's also the shift, try to get her into Far the game, side. start Next her off post. a little bit, um, you know, outside or oh, back uh, in the circle. And then her, uh, a great touch there keeper. from M Mannix. She had a slow game last week, so really great that she's been able to get into the game quite early. You can see that this Vixen side are really trying to push, get that depth down court. Beautiful drive from Sam. Well, an easy over the top from Maui Kamwenda. We'll see plenty of that as the game goes on. What a start for the Melbourne Vixens. Two zip. And again, no issues on this centre pass. Liz Watson straight up the middle. Maloney. And we've been Kamwenda. talking about that mid-court, trying to get them through that middle channel. And something that Simone McInnes has been looking at in that centre pass. That was a perfect centre pass to see. Well, good clearance ball from Clow. And nothing coming. Great defence through the middle for the Melbourne Vixens. Well, they've come to play, haven't they? Potential to go three zip up. Well, Kamwenda keeps it alive, but only back to Fraser. And this is something that both teams do really well, is being able to get those loose ball gets. So, you know, Kamwenda throws it back in, but Fraser was on it straight away. Singleton. Fraser just ran out of room there. Not an option proud. Singleton, though, great follow-up. And that's a good start from her. The Swift's on the board and the centre pass to follow. Please. The great thing about no, Kelly Singleton is that she has this beautiful no, drive across the top of the circle. She used that, she changed no, the pace, landed right back. on that baseline and then backed Bring herself in. Fraser, proud. Housby out of the circle. Wing defense contact, man and Joshua. Eddie just trying to defend from behind. Singleton in good position. And then again, we see that sweep across Both the front of the contact. circle. I'd love to see it sh shoot the first one, though. <laughs> That's because you could shoot them. <laughs> oh, the Swifts got themselves back in the contest. What's it? Western. Eddie. Watson again, from Wenda. Again, Contact look at the Vixens through that mid-channel. Uh, mid All they want is that top of the circle. The you can see that Swiss are really trying to push them into that space, but the Vixens are really getting on top of the Well, bench. they're making a point of it this week, aren't they? Absolutely. Wenda, right under the post. This is her bread and butter. Here on the centre pass, you can see Maddie Proud really allowing Maddie Kelly Singleton to take... A beautiful ball over the top. I was just going to say, she allowed Kelly Singleton to take that first phase, get herself in the second phase, Maddie Proud, and then straight into Housby. Very efficient play. 
Well, Sarah Clay a long way from home here, so good opportunity for the Vixens. Two on one inside the circle. Let's see if they set up a screen or something. Well, not really. Nope. <laughs> Left themselves with a long shooting position, but Kimwenda there for the pass off. And she's wanting more. Look at that. Kimwenda wants more from her team. Keep pushing there. Good long ball from Proud to, well, just overcooked it there. And understandably, a little bit of miscommunication probably between the two. Haven't played a great deal of time together, Singleton and Housley. And Housley spoke about it in pre-season. They did spend a little bit of time together. However, it's not the Super Netball where things are starting to merely ramp up, especially those baseline balls. It's really important that now they start to get that connection really quickly and yeah, make sure that those turnovers aren't coming. Abstraction goalkeeper. Great Abstraction shot from goal. Samerson. And that was in the Vixen. super shot territory, so she might just be warming the hand. Five minutes away from the power five. Maloney. Samerson. Well, right again, vision pick. straight to Kamwenda. Hold time. Yeah, offside. Well, the quick one too. Lizzie Watson, just a little bit of a balance on the ball there, courtesy of push from Fraser. Kamwenda shooting all the goals at this stage, four from four under the post. And you can see that they're really, five from five, sorry, under the post. You can see that she's really dominant in that space. The fact that she's able to hold and move at the same time is very, very, yeah, very exciting. Versatility. Um, the flexibility to be able to do that is fantastic as Mannix gets a beautiful tip outside arm and comes through with it. We'll get down to Sam Pullman now who's on the sideline for us. Sam, a comment about Kamwenda? Absolutely. I think we've spoken a lot about the weak in them coming up the middle and Simone McInnes beside me is really telling him to get off the sideline and punch the middle. And closely, if you watch Kamwenda, on that second phase, she's actually come up middle to supply them another option to go down. So keep watching that because if Maddie Turner doesn't get in front and stop that, that's a really easy link and why Kamwenda's dominating in this game so far. Thank you, Sam. Samerson, Watson. Samerson again. So quite happy to take a couple of passes outside the circle. Just work it in. See the work here. The tip from Ali Smith. And we spoke about her in the opener, that really dogged sort of tagging role she likes to play. Well, just rings out. And who's got the rebound? Well, not entirely sure. There was a good fight over it, but no one cleaned it up. Again, Fraser right in the mix of it. She really is looking for that, you know, those loose balls to really get them and get them back to her players. Contacting the defender. Well, again, Smith, the contact. Right, Liz Watson, an easy one into Kamwenda. And the Vixen starting to put the foot down now in this first quarter, so no surprises. The, the HCF timeout has been called by Swift's coach, Bryony Akel. What do you think she'll want to say to her team here, Kim? Uh, uh, looking at uh, Maddie Turner and Clow in particular, they're getting stuck on the body in that circle, and you can really see that's why they are being able to, the Vixens are being able to get down there and really, you know, work the body, work the angles, because they're just not communicating well enough. So I think that's where they need to work. And see Beck Woolley now having a look at it. Well, Bryony Akel certainly had a lot to say, and it looked like she was talking a bit about just body positioning there, trying to get uh, off the body potentially, not getting some of those cheap penalties, staying in the play and trying to slow this Vixen side down. Now he can win the six from six. Samerson just sitting one from two at the moment. And Swifts have doubled the penalties already in this first quarter. So, yeah, that's something that they'll definitely be looking at, something that they looked at last week and, um, yeah, probably disappointing from the start. Let's go, Swifts. Let's go. 
Well, Swiss do really need to score here and keep themselves in this contact contest, rather. Down by five. Crowd. Fraser. Over to Smith. Oh, unlucky from Eddie there at the top of the circle. She was really trying to keep them all on the one side. Just gave away the penalty. Well, direct up the middle to Helen Housby, and she sinks one. So she'll be happy with that. Take it three from four for her. Not the best start from her, sitting on minus miss and net points at the moment. 75% Kelly Singleton, though. Good support. And by poking on that one just there, it really gets you out of play, releases the pressure. Now the Vixens have the opportunity to set something up. The defenders are already trying to figure out how they're going to get out of it. So if you find yourself in that behind position, best just to let it go let rather it, than give away a cheap penalty. Let it go because then your defenders are already in a great position. If you poke like that, it releases pressure. Well, you can certainly see the difference without a Sam Wallace, can't you? Seven to go in this quarter and only four on the board for the Swifts. There she is, Sam Wallace, looking on from the sideline. Yet to have her surgery, but we know that she won't take part in the rest of this season. Big, big step up for Helen Housby to try and control this young attack line for the Swifts. And at the moment, just not happening. Good long ball, two good long balls from the Melbourne Vixens. And we also need to pay credit to Paige Hadley. You know, looking at the centre passes just there, you can see Fraser doesn't want to give the ball. Um, that's a ball that Paige Hadley would normally give, and the flow would then flow on from there. So they're definitely missing Hadley in that middle. Very good point. Well, look at that scoreline. Not where the Swiss would have liked it to start this game. Their round two match is still chasing their first win. The Melbourne Vixens, as we know, a solid win last week. Again, we see Maloney at the top of the circle. That's all they want is to get that middle channel. Swift need to fix that. Push him out wide, get him in the pocket. If you have a look at this replay, a beautiful uh, feed off just to Kamwenda. Make sure that they can get in a little bit closer. You can see the zone through this mid channel here. And if we have a look at our match leaders of Vincent Net Points, Mannix doing a fantastic job. She was quiet last week and has obviously worked on that this week. Well, it's all Vixens, isn't it? Apart from Maddie Proud, the captain, doing everything she can, as is Singleton. So two shots and drain both. Good to see that from her as she steps up. And she'll need to do that for the rest of the season. Can win her again up the middle. Weston. Watson, Samerson doing a lot of work outside the circle kick. And she is, and what I loved about that play, Clow came out and had a crack at it. it disrupts the play, she may not go there again. So, uh, yeah, I think the Swiss are starting to find their feet and just actually going for the ball. Well, there's a siren for the power five, so any shot now taken in the white arc of the circle is worth two. It's a Suncorp super shot. And the Swifts, they've got themselves in a position where they need them. And Helen Housby knows that. She's gone straight there. And Joe Weston, probably a silly penalty. You don't want to give Helen Housby too many cracks at these shots. Although she just looks off the boil, doesn't she? Shots not convincing at all. No, not at all. And I think, you know, the fact that Sammy Wallace isn't there for the rebound even on those two-point shots is, um, yeah, something that we need to keep in, keep in mind there. Wenda out of the circle. Well, good challenge from Turner. Well, Kamwenda, no need to be trying to shoot these shots, but she really wants to maybe just get the radar in ahead of the rest of the game. A fantastic rebound by Turner. You can see the experience in that uh, goal circle, wanting to really step up for the Swifts as well. Well, they need the turnovers, don't they? They've got to get themselves back in this contest. And Dare I say it, they've got to start shooting the super shots now in this first quarter to stay in touch. A two on one in the circle here. And the Swiss need to really take advantage of this. Well, Singleton had an opportunity in the super shot range, didn't want to let it go. 
So two over the shot from Housby and again another miss. And that's a hard part of these five minutes is that if you don't shoot those and you miss on the next run, it's game over, really. You have to actually back yourself in to take those shots or you go for the one. Well, just like that, though, the Vixen's down court again. Sneaky well, little push in the back. Yeah, well, <laughs> fortunate, though, wasn't it? Because they've managed to keep possession where it looked like the ball was going to fly out of court. And there's your contact penalties, as you mentioned early, 17 already or 18 for the New South Wales Swift. So it's getting out of touch. But another good, smart tip from Turner to a Swift's teammate to keep possession. They're doing all they can down in this defence end to really try and capitalise. Play on beautifully from Smith into the circle. Stunning. That was a great play. Well, another good shot from Kelly Singleton. So, 6 to 12 at the moment. Kelly Singleton hasn't missed a shot. Helen Howsby sitting at 42%. We don't often see that. No, we don't. Will we see Sophie Fawns come into the game? Uh, you know, she's warming up over on the sideline at the moment. I think we might see a change. Well, it's been some big shoulders for Helen Housby this year. She's got a lot to take on with Sam Wallace down, but she's got to step up and have a bigger year than what she's having right now. Swifts are putting on a zone through this goal third here. Wow, again, having a crack out there. That's exactly what you want from your goal defence. Watson. Well, two options. A little bit of a balk, but it didn't shift Turner. Lucky to keep possession of that one, the Melbourne Vixens. But what a cracking quarter. They've doubled the score of the New South Wales Swifts. Still just over a minute to play. There's your super shot attempt. So both sides have had two, none falling yet. Cowsby trying to take control here. And we need her under the post. That's where she needs to be. There we go. On cue. <laughs> she, she heard you. She's tuning in. Well, I think she's so focused on the Suncorp super shot at the moment. Sadly, they're in the position that they have to be. Eddie. Maloney. Oh, who's onto it? Well, it was a miss speed. Maddie Proud loves those loose balls. Maloney again, Eddie, Weston. With well, some good defence here. Vixen struggling to get any sort of penetration. Watson. Contact shooter! Well, there it is. So all the work that's been done defensively. And Kamwenda starting to push a little bit in retaliation. I'm loving what Cloud's actually bringing in this attack line because she's got that beautiful height. They're able to just throw it over the top and get it down court a little bit quicker. Oh, great ball. There's some confidence coming from the captain. And that's the finish that we're used to seeing from Helen Housby. Need more of it. The New South Wales Swifts. And the confidence to give that ball when you're down by six. There it is on the Harvey Norman replay. Straight over the top. Well, that'll be the first quarter. And it's the Melbourne Vixens in complete control, leading the New South Wales Swifts by five. Now we can wind up. Is the person to stop at the moment of the Vixen? Vixen's 14. She has 13. So, real opportunity for Maddie Turner and Sarah Cloud to step up and try and shut that down. The Swifts got to get themselves back in the contest here. Kim Green, how do they do it? Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough, but they just need to concentrate on the first, the next quarter. They don't go too far ahead chipping away as they go. Well, throwing the ball away like they just did certainly isn't going to help their cause. Can wind up. We'll get down now to Sam Pullman, who's on the sidelines for us today. What did you hear in that quarter time break, Sam? A really happy coach in Simone McInnes, and why wouldn't she be with their start? She spent a lot of time talking about their movement, that it's good, they need to keep going, get the ball moving when there's a penalty by the Swift, so don't wait and allow them to set up get that ball going and spoke about the shooting end in terms of standing up tall, acknowledge that the Swifts are contacting a lot and making sure that they're strong in their take. 
Well, there it is, a turnover and a smile on the face of Kamwenda. So, an opportunity here. There's the ball and just fumbles it over the sideline. But again, the Swifts throwing it away. Well, what a frustrating night it's been for Bryony Akel already. But it's back and forth like a tennis match at the moment here, Kim. And Bryony spoke to her players, her attackers in particular, about getting on the fence really quickly. And that's exactly what they just did. They threw it away, got back on it quickly, and got the re oh, they reaped the rewards. Well, penalty inside the circle. And Mannix will be out. And Kelly Singleton. Hasn't missed yet. Three from three. Happy to swing it around and just get a little bit closer. And Helen Housby shot. That one fell, but still not convincing, is it? It's just dribbling over the front of the ring. It is, and we're so used to seeing Housby so confident in that circle. So I think that she will find her feet in this game, but she just needs to concentrate on her own job. Maloney, Samerson. Well, I would really love to see Samerson get in the circle, but at the moment, the one-on-one -on -one Kamwenda is nailing every time, which is why she's not going in. She's just letting Kamwenda do all the damage, sitting on 14 from 14, why would you not? Yeah, and the great thing about Kamwenda is she has got that hold, but she's got that versatility to be able to move. Well done, Mannix, what a beautiful oh, intercept. Getting two hands on that, and it's a quick transition down oh, the court. Well, there's the intercept stacking up. Four to the Vixens, just the one to the New South Wales Swifts. So an opportunity here for the Vixens yeah. to go six up. Oh, and it's a fight up, Kamwenda. She's not loving that attention that she's getting from either of the Swiss defenders, is she? No, that's right. And this is where Kamwenda starts to come into the game. When she is fiery, um, she has got a little body on her. She loves it and she'll bring it. Again, we see Ram uh, Samerson out the front. Oh, what a take. Speaking of fired up Kamwenders, that's possibly the last thing the Swifts want to do is fire her up. Yes, definitely, like <laughs> definitely not. But what I'm loving about Samerson, she's coming up and she's willing to give that ball and she's really trusting in Kamwenda to do the job out underneath the post. Well, she's got to have to be ready to step up herself, though, when needs be. Here's the play. Have a look at the take just inside the court there. You can see Kamwenda flash past. Coaches often talk about not taking that with one hand. I think Kamwenda, you can. Contact. <laughs> Sam Pullman, one of the best defenders to play the game. You've got a comment on him, Maddox. Look, you got to talk up a goalkeeper when they're doing a good <laughs> job. And I really just want to highlight Emily Mannix. We saw her, not her best performance last week and got uh, taken from the court, but already we're into the second quarter. And a really solid contest there by Maddie Tor Turner, talking about defenders. But she's sitting at Emily Mannix, two rebounds, four intercepts and 52 miss and net, net points already. Yeah, that's a solid effort, isn't it? And that is the reason that Helen Housby has also been so quiet. So she's pinpointed the player that they really need to shut down for the Swifts. Another turnover coming for the Melbourne Vixens. So it's an absolute free-for-all at the moment. Weston, Watson, Maloney. You can see the Vixens starting to get a little bit stifled through this top of the goal, the goal third. And I think what they could play is a close circle, get the shooters in the circle, and Maloney and Watson just ping it in between each other and get on the top. Well, Maloney and Watson love the edge of the circle. They do. find it at the best of time. So not a bad plan, an option. Proud, long. Great opportunity for Swift to take a breather here. Set something up. defence out here so normally you would see the midis come together they've decided to go on their own path well potentially because they're not really used to each other that much at the moment with Paige Hadley out proud well Howsby trying to sweep around and push through that is a dicey ball over M Mannix when she's in such good form they get away with it the Swiss and you can see Housby starting to fire up. And even structure two going towards Kelly Singleton. Maloney. Kawenda out now. Well, and that's the issue trying to get back in, isn't it? And you can't be giving away those penalties at the top of the circle. Fraser needs to be able to stay in play there. Keep creating pressure. Keep pushing Watson all the way to the pocket. 
great take by Maddie Proud. She'll put her body on the line all day for those. Great ball too. And again over in Mannix. So they're starting to feel it a little bit now. The New South Wales Swifts. That shot too from Helen Housby looked a lot more convincing. Helen Housby 10 from 12. Just the two attempts at super shots. Both misses. And Kelly Singleton, good support. Three from three at the moment. I'd like to see Kelly Singleton get under the post a little bit more to take that pressure off Housby. You can see that she has, hasn't had her best game so far as a goal attack. You need to be able to step up in those moments. Agreed. Cloud. Well, Ali Smith very close to the action. Really just struggling to get free was Maddie Proud, wasn't she? Saw her using her arms, trying to rid herself of Kate Eddy. Well, sometimes in games like this where you haven't started well, you end up overrunning everything. Use your free limbs, get your timing right. You can almost be a little bit later than early. Take a step in, goalkeeper. Step in. Yes. Housby. Oh, she's starting to find a groove, as I said before. Watch out, Melbourne Vixens. Five in it, and they've got the centre pass, so they can get it back to four here, the New South Wales Swifts. A great easy first phase for Singleton, the sweep around the front. But still no other option. It's just the one. Well, nothing really behind them either on the line. Sarah Clough, hands to her head. Knew she'd thrown that away. So they're making tough work of it here, the New South Wales Swiss. Five to five in this quarter, though. So they're staying within reach. Another good tip, Sarah Clough. Watson. Am I asking too much with two hands on that one? If she intercepts it. <laughs> so Mo McKinnis will be saying, well, who from Sarah Clow? Yeah. I'm sure Bryony Oak will say exactly the same thing. Oh, nothing coming forward. That was good defence from the New South Wales Swifts. Had their opponents behind them and didn't let them out. Vixens had to go up and over. Swifts trying to put on a wall on that centre pass. But Watson all alone. Well, substitution made. Kelly Singleton to the bench and Sophie Fawns has come on from the Sutherland Shire. Sophie Fawns, 22 years of age. An exciting prospect. Uh, no, she's Fawns. not. She's from Wagga Wagga. Pardon me. She is. So much has happened this week. Shire. I can't keep up. <laughs> but what an exciting moment for Sophie Fawns. She's a young gun coming through, a country girl coming up against the likes of the Victoria. Well, what a way to start. Has the connection between the two and she loves it. The high turn with Helen Housby. Listen to the crowd. It's come alive. Now they need some ball back here, the New South Wales Swifts. What I've really noticed this year already, Maloney's starting to feed a little bit more and be confident in her feed. If we take a look at that replay there, wanting to drive straight onto that baseline. So much confidence for her debut. Well, good to see she's not trying to work around Helen Housby. She wants to get into the action. She wants to play. She wants to shoot shots. She wants to shoot shots. How good is it to see? Look at the smile on her face, too. She has single-handedly brought this crowd to life. Boom, there they are. Two from two for Sophie Fawns. Well, we saw this happen last year. Kira Austin goes down for the Giants. Sophie Dwyer comes in, steps up, has a cracking year. The opportunity is there. Sophie Fawn's putting her hand up. You can see she's lifted the defence end. They're really starting to talk down there. It was quiet in the first quarter. Now you're starting to hear some voices. It's pretty exciting. Ronnie Samerson still not able to make them drop. Well, and another change happening too. Gorman Brown. Yeah, Lily Gorman Brown is from the Sutherland Shire. She's 22 years of age. <laughs> Oh, so much happening this week. And she's a nippy little mid-quarter. Um, defensively is right in the contest, but will give that ball as well. So, uh, as we spoke about, Fraser holding on to the ball a little bit too long. How good to see Bronny Akel making these changes, though. Haven't had a lot of experience at this level, these two players. Oh, great ball from Watson to West and can wind her up the middle again. There she is, Bronny Akel, her assistant back bully next to her. Samerson makes one drop, and it's a Suncorp super shot. And Suncorp.
Corp donating $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation for every super shot that is sunk today. Unlucky on that one, just ball into the hands. Those are the ones that you just know at this level you just have to get on with. Oh, it's a dicey ball, but if anyone can take it, it's Liz Watson, double defended. And Samerson again. Well, this is where she came into her own last week, and she's done it again. Another Suncorp super shot. And the timeout being called, the HCF timeout. So a chance for both sides just to head to their benches, have a little bit of a chat with the coaches. Let's get down now and have a listen to Bryony Angle in the Swiss huddle. We need to have a full side option, so let's hang in back, drive through the mess and then get, come back into it. Lil? Yeah. So if you're high, just yeah. say, Brownie's up here, you're in the pocket. Hold, but then try and hit circle it. That's okay. the top of the circle. Okay. Yeah? I think they're going to pick this cross-court ball off. Yeah. yeah? Let's fake it and go down the middle. Let's yeah. change the middle from going this side to middle. Yeah. And take your time. You don't have to rush it in. But if it's on, give it. I almost think we're looking at the person, and that's too patient. We've got to give it and go, and then cut back. Right? Have the confidence to let it go. Yeah. Bryony Ankle, plenty to say to her team. Really positive though, lots of chat saying don't have to rush it, let's just keep control, give it when it's on. They'd be feeling pretty good about that little comeback. They're still down 7-14 to 14 in this quarter, but you felt the momentum shift a little bit there, Kim? Yeah, absolutely, and you can really tell that they're starting to find their groove, find their confidence in what they're doing. Watson. Well, over the top again to Kamwenda. Controls that backspace better than most in the game. We've seen Matty Proud going to the centre and Lily Gorman Brown into wing attack. Oh, Joe Weston. Well, she had all the time in the world to get to it, didn't she? She did, and beautiful hands over. I'm so unlucky. Umpire saw it in a different, in a different way. Sophie Fawns has become the crowd favourite in four <laughs> minutes, unless this is all her family in here. They have jumped on board in support. <laughs> well, again, Samerson trying to get herself into that position. <laughs> That's the take from Kamwenda. She went up so early and had to have a bit of hang time. And in the last five minutes, we've seen Watson really take a lot of the feeding role in this Vixens lineup. Maybe Ellie Smith needs to, you know, really try and keep her off the circle as opposed to allowing her to get on that circle edge. Well, here's an opportunity for the Swifts, and they need to score from it. And more than that, they need a Suncorp super shot from it. They find themselves down by 14. Kim, the miss at net points, that's scary. Yeah, Vixen's all over it. You see Watson right at the top at 71. Manic's still having a fantastic game there in second. But, yeah, it's all down the court. It's not just down in one area. Yeah, complete domination at the moment, isn't it? The Swifts have got to get the ball in that white arc and get a super shot up. And how good to see Sophie Fawns wanting it in hand, but then Mannix again to ruin the party. Well, just under two minutes left in this second quarter. And the break probably can't come soon enough for the New South Wales Swifts. They'll have plenty to talk about, even with the fumbled ball. The Vixens just keeping possession. And Watson and Kamwenda, that connection needs to be stopped. That is too strong down there. Way too easy at the moment. Kamwenda's doing whatever she wants back there. I would be looking at putting Fraser on at the wing defence position. You know, get Watson up a little bit higher, match up the speed. Is it worth even just thinking about a positional swap, getting Sarah Clough back to where she's used to being, back in goalkeeper? Yeah, I think so. A little bit of height as well. She's a little bit taller under the post there. Oh, M Mannix again. So strong to the ball. Oh, gosh, it's turned into that tennis match one more time. And in the back of play, Rani Samerson has gone to the bench and Kira Austin on. And Kira Austin might inject herself a little bit more in the game. 
and I think that change in particular was just to give Austin a little bit more confidence from last week. Samerson has done such a fantastic job in this first half. Well, two yes. bites at the cherry there for Sophie Fawns. Does good with the second one. Suncorp super shot, just what they needed. Just in the back of play, Halfie has uh, been grabbing at her thigh, so I don't know if we've got a bit of a cork there. Well, again, up and over the top, too easy. This change between Clow and Turner, I think, needs to come. Something has got to stop. Now we can wind up. Yeah, what a great little mix-up then, and good take from Sophie Fawns to keep it alive. Helen Housby has to drain it, and she does. With one second left on the clock, well, right when the New South Wales Swifts needed a boost, they get it going in to half time. Still find themselves down by quite a bit, 19 to 32. And they lost that quarter, 17 to 8. It's a big second half coming up. And it will get underway through Kate. Maloney, the co-captain of the Melbourne Vixens, Liz Watson, can wind up. Well, spoken a lot about her being out of the circle. And that was the defence that Bryony's talking about. It's just beautiful one-on-one -on -one hard defence out the was front. Was that a hell ball. ball? It was. That was the fastest hell ball I think I've ever heard. Anyway. <laughs> beautiful intercept from Kate Maloney in that centre third. You could see she wanted that eye. She had the eyes for the ball only, and she was going to get it. Well, just a few little errors creeping in. They've kept the same shooting lineup that they had towards the end of that second quarter with Kira Austin on. The change there made with Rani Samerson. Kamwenda stays in at goal shooter because she has been flawless today. Just the one miss coming from a super shot. Otherwise, 100% shooting. Swift all over the line on that centre pass. You can see Fraser and Housby just haven't quite got their connection on that first phase. Housby down. Well, she's got to get up pretty quickly. The big swing ball had to come to Fraser. Nothing on offer. Plow. Proud. Fawns. Well, just probably not strong enough on the take there. But she's done well since she's entered the game, hasn't she? Sophie Fawns. Three from four. We talk about confidence when you first come on to the game. It's now about being consistent for the next half. I'm really interested to see how she's able to step up. Owen oh, Housby. Well, oh, she's got to get these to sink. They just haven't really been falling the way we know they can for Helen Housby. She's still a little bit of a leap. You mentioned you might have seen a cork happen in that first half, Kim. So we'll keep an eye on that. And Wenda out again. But got to put more work on it to keep her outside the circle, not just let her straight back in again. And we've seen Kimwenda out of the circle pretty much the whole game. So it is time to step up and keep her out. Yeah, normally you'd be clapping your hands together if your goal shooter's gone outside the circle, wouldn't you? But you're right, what a beautiful connection. Top of the circle, Fraser. Well, that's one of the best plays from the Swifts. They need to finish, and they do. And Brownie talked about that second phase. That is why Fraser is in that wing attack position. We have a look at the shooting stats here. You can see Sophie Fawns, four from five, Housley 12 from 15. Now, it doesn't look too bad, but it's that super shot time that they need to be able to consolidate. Well, that's a good tip from behind from Sarah Clow. No call on it. Contact centre. And how strong is Liz Watson at the top of the circle? And again, just flawless on that feed into Kamwenda. The first miss coming. And it's a rebound to the New South Wales Swifts. Contact wing. See the structure of the Vixens' attack has changed a little bit. They're now moving quite a bit. We have a look at the circle feeds. Watson is absolutely dominating that space. Crowd taking a lot of the um, a lot of the load in that Swifts lineup. Oh, another error now to the New South Wales Swifts as well. We just see the Harvey Norman replay here. Too much on it from Sophie Fawns to Housby. So those errors creeping up. 14 turnovers now for the New South Wales Swifts, and then down the other end, all too easy. 
And Turner came out on that one, was completely beaten, but next time that the feeders go to throw that ball from the Vixens, they will second guess whether or not she is going to come out. It's a great, great ploy. If we have a look at Vixens, shooting stats can win to 29 from 30. She has been outstanding out there. Here at Austin, not to put a shot up yet. And interesting, given how much Kamwenda's coming out of the circle, why isn't she just getting in and taking that next ball? There seems to be plenty of opportunity for the goal attack in this game to get some shots up. Maloney, Watson. And Kira Austin Off plays five, almost like, oh, I'd be an absolute coach killer there. Is it offside? Yeah, an offside by Kate Maloney. But going back to Kira Austin, she plays almost like a wing attack out in front. So when Kamenda is coming out of the circle, she needs to get moving. Oh. Well, Joe Weston saw it, probably just a little too late on the challenge. Cleaned up the Swifts captain, Maddie Proud. Proud with the ball now, good vision long. Finds Sophie Fawns, who has been brilliant on the finish. There's the Harvey Norman replay. Yeah, Joe, just a little bit late on that one. Probably could have pulled out of it. Maddie Proud's always on the ground though, so <laughs> back to where, she's, where she belongs. We go down again to Sam Pullman on the sideline for us today. When we look at the New South Wales Swifts and when we talk about it, they to kind of bring this, well, they need to bring this uh, scoreline back. They need to actually get their hands on ball. They're only sitting at one intercept compared to Melbourne Vixens eight. So if they want to close this gap, and get back into contention. They need to get not only pressure on their opponent, but hands on ball. Absolutely, they do. And then they've got to get it down that other end and score. And have a look at the deflections, though. 17 to 8. So the Swift's getting tips and touches on the ball, but just can't pull it in. They're there or thereabouts. And Bryony Aker will go back to this post-game and say, how did we not make those intercepts? And then consolidate down well, the She'll probably end. say exactly what you said before. <laughs> Two hands! <laughs> Colin Housby with the throw in. Big swing across the circle crowd. Housby the drive after it. A little bit of urgency creeping in here for the New South Wales Swifts. Well, nowhere to go. Fraser's had to go all the way back to Sarah Clow on the transverse. One thing that I, I think the Swifts can bring into their game is either give the ball straight away and have the penalty you know, brought by the umpire or fake the ball. And we just heard Bryony earlier in the game ask for fakes, but we haven't seen much of it. So that's something that could definitely improve on in the second half. A good pass off to Sophie Forms, who puts another on the board. Hasn't she been good since she's come on? Six from seven. Liz Watson is running the show down here. Well, and tell me a game where Liz Watson's not running the show. I, I know, <laughs> and I know. Exactly it's hard to stop her, but Ali Smith really needs to stick on one-on-one. -on -one. She tried to do a switch with crowd on that one, and it just didn't work. Watson completely free in the pocket. A lot of work to be done on that one. Well, and that's what's happening there. There's your goal assist because of that freedom. Liz Watson sitting pretty at the top. Well, she so often does anyway, but you're right, she needs a lot more attention. And Ali Smith would know how to play her. She is an ex-teammate. She would have trained on her more than a few times. Fawns. Proud. And back to Fawns. So I'm loving the work that I'm seeing in the circle from her. Absolutely no dramas with the finish. Sophie Forms does not look phased. Not at all, does One she? Bit. Not at all. Cool as a cucumber. Well, what an inclusion in this side. And if she continues this performance, she could find herself the number 10 contracted player as a permanent replacement for Sam Wallace. As we know, she's only in for this week at the moment. The Swift's still searching for that replacement. And there's been a lot of talk this week about it. So to come out here and put a performance on like that is pretty impressive. As, as we see Sammy Wallace on the side, looks a little bit more concerned than Sophie Fawns. Well, some great movement and great takes too coming from the New South Wales Swifts now. And that brings the crowd into the game. Still 13 the difference though. And here's the Harvey Norman replay, a good one too between Fawns and Housby and another opportunity for the New South Wales Swifts that they must score. 
plenty of turnovers in the game. We've seen creep in from them. This is an opportunity to really start to chip away at this margin. 16 turnovers. And you can see that the Swifts are now starting to find two leads on all of their attacking plays. If we have a look at the match leaders for the Nissan. Oh, disaster. <laughs> Contact at the top of the circle from Matty Proud, but if we can look at the match leaders of the Nissan net points, Mannix and Watson. We keep going at it for that top position, but they coxing. <laughs> Fighting over it. <laughs> Why are the rest of the Melbourne Vixens? It's all blue. Austin, Maloney, Watson. And that's what I was talking about with Austin. She almost plays a mid-court role. She was so high in this. A mid third, allowing her medians to go and do all the work down below. Beautiful take. But even and then, Kamwenda. that ball's forced over to Kimwenda because yeah. it just feels like a really soft kind of nothing entry coming from Kira Austin. I know she's coming back from a knee recon still. She's still rehabbing, probably not fully fit, but got to give more than that, even if nothing else but to draw a penalty. Yeah, and I think this is where the leadership in this attacking line needs to just say, okay, let's get Austin in the circle and allow her to have the position of switch from Kalenda to try and get Austin into the game. She's only shot one goal. There's the Harvey Norman replay. Long ball again at Sophie Fawns. Doing everything right since she's entered the game. And the siren has just gone. We are now in the power five. So Suncorp super shot in play. Worth two points from the white arc. Kamwenda not too fussed about that. Why would you beat? 13 goals the difference at the moment for the Melbourne Vixens. All they need to do is that. Keep chipping away. Keep the scoreboard ticking over. Proud. Long wall. The vision was there. Helen Housby did exceptionally well to take it under the pressure of Mannix. An overhead cross-court pass, yeah, a coach's every, nightmare. Yeah, absolutely, every <laughs> coach in the world will be yelling, don't throw it! I sound like Barney Aiken. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> well, Helen Housby drains one. Just what they needed. Here's the ball, a cross-court long and Mannix. The tip, but not enough. We can see Hannah Mundy out on the sideline here, looking to come on in that centre position. So we expect Maloney to the bench pretty soon. Again, beautiful ball. Austin just kind of hanging out. Not really giving a whole heap in this quarter at all, is she? You'd think after last week and having the pressure of Samson coming on and playing so well, she would want to get in there and control. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if Simone McInnes uh, is asking for a different role from Kira Austin. Is it a feeding role as opposed to actually getting in there and dominating? Surely not. not. Surely not. But you never know. Well, another opportunity, Helen House with the radar. Here she Here's goes. On. Suncorp super shot. And don't forget, $100 for every Suncorp super shot is going to the Confident Girls Foundation to help continue their work in keeping girls in our great game. Listen, hit points. Oh my gosh, look at the difference. It has blown out there. Melbourne Vixens 326 see the work from Clow over that shot as well. You can see that she really can see that Kira Austin hasn't been able to inject in the game just yet. And is really trying to get on her confidence. Proud. Beautiful drive from Proud on the second phase. She's going again. She's doing everything she can to try and inject this energy down in the attack line. Helen Housby looks to me like she's playing with a little bit more freedom because she's not having to worry about Sophie Fawns. Sophie Fawns is doing her job. Tough call there, body on body. Welcome to Super Netball, Sophie Fawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, just over two minutes left in this third quarter. And the Swifts are currently leading it 11 to 9. So a much better performance from them. And Ali Smith now wants a piece of the action against her old club. And that was a cross court pass. Again. Read it like a book. <laughs> Oh, taking their time. Yeah. Oh, oh, too oh, much hell. time. You called it, Kim Green. Keep After all that hard work. 
And here's the Harvey Norman replay. Beautiful two hands, as we've been speaking about, from Ali Smith coming through with that intercept. Well, it's another opportunity here for the New South Wales Swiss. They should think themselves lucky, but they need to score off at this time. Sophie Fawns wants to put a hand up to be the hero in this game. How good to see that. Helen Housby, though, she's certainly got that radar back on. 13 to 10 in this quarter in way of the New South Wales Swifts. The margin back to 10. And that was a great drive by Kira Austin down into the pocket. She had some depth about her lead. Oh, another opportunity here. So the defence has picked up a notch for the New South Wales Swifts. A held ball against Liz Watson. What can the New South Wales Swifts do with it with 42 seconds left on the clock? Plenty of time. I was just going to say, Simone McInnes will not be happy with this quarter at all. And it's just more the fact that they don't have two options in attack. Um, it's really stalled them. And then in defence, Helen Howes was able to do Helen Howes with things. Well, they need the rebound. Well, I thought she'd snuck away in there. Well, she feels like she's been ripped off, and the crowd agree. This is when the Swifts need to get back on their players, get their head back in their game. They're doing a great job this quarter. Don't let it slip in this last minute. Well, 15 seconds, too, to try and hold out what's been a juggernaut, the Melbourne Vixens. Kira Austin sneaks. Beautiful timing from Austin. Through the baseline and has to finish. She does. And she took the player away and came back at it. Beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly what Kira Austin does so well. Simone McInnes will be wanting to see a bit more of that in this final quarter. But for now, the Melbourne Vixens leading by 11 and a massive final quarter coming up as Victoria and New South Wales go head to head. The Swifts huddle brought to you by Origin Energy. And Kim, lots of positives coming from Coach Bryony Akel, even though they find themselves down by 11. Yeah, you can see they're, they're very relaxed. As we see Lizzie Ellis, former Diamonds captain, uh, both of our captains, and an absolute superstar of a human. Well, and Tori Saywell sitting to her right as well. Tori Bryant played for the New South Wales Swifts too. So plenty of support superstars in the crowd. That's nice to see. Sure is. Well, speaking of superstars, plenty of them out on the court at the moment. And the New South Wales Swifts will want to finish this game well. Neither of these sides have a record for good final quarters. The Swifts in particular haven't won a final quarter in their last five games, including the end of last season. What a good start from the Swifts. They could have swung it to the top. Crowd was there all by herself. Oh, great take from Eddie. Well, <laughs> I'm back in the wing attack on that one. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know how on earth that happened, but let's uh, see if we can get a replay. See exactly what went on in that one. Sophie Fawns rights the wrong. And here's the replay here. Coming from behind, I would say contact wing attack, but anyways, um, <laughs> Kate Eddy, unfortunate on that one, I would say. Well, another held ball, so the wheels have fallen off a little bit here for the Melbourne Vixens. This held ball is rather quick, if I do say so. We though. have had so many held balls. It must be good defence first off, but the hands over pressure has been something I've been really impressed with this game. Well, a loose ball there just coming from Sarah Clow. Lucky to get away with that. There's your held balls. You talked about that, Kim. Seven of them in the game. And Joe Weston trying to keep the Vixens' momentum going. <laughs> Can Wenda asking why she got put out of contact, uh, out of uh, play for contact in that one. Pulling some arms, I would say. Oh, oh. Miscommunication again into that pocket. Yeah. We just side, both sides at exactly the same time. And, and it's unfortunate because Swifts are doing such great work and being able to get this ball back, and it is from their attackers. Well, it's exactly the same thing happening at both sides at the moment, isn't it? Just the mess in the middle here. Really? Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Another one, and they seem to be getting faster. Well, the lesson is to not look panicked with ball in hand. As soon as they do that, the whistle seems to come. Good hands over from Joe Weston. But the opportunity stays with the New South Wales Swifts. Can they get a score here? And that's a beautiful swing 
from Fraser to the top of the circle to Proud. Opens up that top of the circle. And a great strong rebound from Helen Housby as well. Under the pressure of M Mannix, she had a cracking first half of the game. Been a little quiet since. Yeah, Fawns has been fantastic coming on into that goal shooter position. And I've loved the switch to Housby out the front. She's been able to get her groove back out there. Well, it's a position she's used to. It makes sense, doesn't it? Leave yeah. one of them in a spot they're comfortable at least. Well, they're finding that triangle swing around the top so much easier now, and it's actually opening up the circle really well. And what I'm loving about the Swift's attack at the moment, they're bringing the umpire into the game. They're bringing the body onto a Joe Weston just like that. Uh, uh, How's been putting a body on the line? Relieves that pressure a little bit. Well, Sophie Forbes just continues to impress. And what a start to the fourth quarter. Three to zip in this final quarter for the New South Wales Swifts. Another substitution. Hannah Mundy for Kate Maloney. Good to get that experience in Kate Maloney back out on the court. And Samerson getting the hand ready, warming it up for the last five minutes of this game. And you know Maloney versus Proud is just going to be this fiery contest where they're both wanting it for their team so much. It's going to be a great last quarter. Well, let's get down to Sam Pullman before it heats up too much. Well, I'm sitting next to a very uh, frustrated coach, I think Simone McInnes, her third time. Third quarter talk, sorry, to her team was all about having the vision, having the offers and give and go. And we've seen so many held balls in that first quarter. So that's what she's asking for a team. Have the vision, let the ball go quickly and go again, just like they did successfully in the first half of the match. Well, such a good point. And you can sense the urgency too coming from the co-captain and Liz Watson just then racing to get the penalties and get on with the job as Kamwenda continues on her merry way. 36 from 37. And if we take a look at the penalties there, it's quite even. If we think about last week with the Swifts in particular, they were out of play for quite a bit of the game. So it's good to see that they're in there. Well, that was lucky. Unfortunate that Fraser had tripped over. I thought she was going to lose possession there, but the Swifts managed to keep it. I feel like momentum is well and truly on the Swift side at the moment, though. They've got to keep scoring and try and keep it that way in this final quarter. And love to see again Sophie Forms presenting for the ball. She wants the ball in hand. She's not afraid of the pressure cooker that has just turned into this last quarter. What Housley did really well on that one was that she took her player forward to have the space in the back. So if you have a look at Proud, she was able to give that ball with confidence, knowing that she could really place her in the right position. while Swifts have got it back to eight in this final quarter. And they're winning this quarter five to two at the moment. That's a good little cheeky pass through, but Maddie Turner wasn't having a bar of it. Well, one of the few pickups that she's got in this game. What a time to do it. To think that the Swifts were down by 13 at half time. And you can feel that the Vixens were starting to find their groove, so a perfect leader opportunity to come out and get that tip and follow up. Well, again, who's presenting for the ball? Nothing coming then. Sophie Fawns pulls the trigger and it's good. Well, we've got a ball game on our hands now here at Ken Rosewell Arena. And Simone McInnes knows it. It's an ACF timeout. Sophie Fawns, what a step up onto the big stage. Let's have a listen, if we can, to Simone McInnes. Just keep it simple. We've got to let that ball go. When that option's there, just let that ball go. But we've got to have those options. When we give it, we're driving. I still think there's still a bit of giving it and looking. All right? So let's give that ball and drive, and let's let it go. You throw it, you drive. Yeah. It's all about work rate. We get to circle yeah. edge and we shoot. Yeah. You guys can shoot from anyway. Let's yeah. go. Come on. Fix something. One, two, three. Fix. Fix. 
Kate Maloney, always inspiring, always passionate. The rest of the Melbourne Vixens, though, they look a little deflated to you. Well, well I think they just think they've got it in the bag as well. Like, they are a confident team. They know how to win. They know how to get themselves out of this position. Um, Kate Maloney does bring such spice into those, uh, uh, you know, those team huddles. But uh, what I loved is... Lizzie Watson just stands there and goes, yep, 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 yeah. I've got this. Yeah, heard it all before, yeah. Kate. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I know no, I've got a nail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're right. It's the kind of team it is, full of superstars. Been here, done it many times before. And we talked about dictating Kath, and you can see the, the matchup on Kate Eddy on Fraser, and there's a lot of body going on out there, just out of shot. Mousby. Fraser, Housby again, proud, Housby, well Housby does so much work, doesn't she? And then got to get herself in the circle and still dominate in this department, and she does. Exhausting game to play though when you're touching the ball that much. It is, and Sophie Fawns wasn't quite sure as to whether or not she needed to stay under the post, but if you can have a look at Housby and where she's shooting her goals, you can't really pinpoint it other than that the right side. Maybe they need to push her there a little bit more quickly. Well, oh, it's an offensive contact. Rani Samerson. So another opportunity here for the New South Wales Swifts. And if they can score here, they've got it back to five. And that transition was three balls into the goal third. Well, this is a monumental turn of events. What a performance from the New South Wales Swifts. Coach Bryony Akel is up on her feet. Now the Swifts need to just start finding their groove, get a little bit tighter with their, their passes, not risk too many into the pocket. Let's get short again. Yeah, this Melbourne Vixen side's not going to just lie down and let them take this win, are they? So you're so right. It's about the possession game that they did those two years. They won the Premiership. And we've got to remember they did it without Maddie Proud, the leadership of Maddie Proud. So they can do it. It's about finding their confidence, but finding the rhythm as well. As we take a look at the Harvey Norman replay here, Manic's just getting a little bit caught up with her feet, I'd say. Well, if nothing else, it's an opportunity for both teams just to have a breather, isn't it? Oh, Mannix was down again and not in a hurry to get up. But someone that's getting up, fired up, it's Helen Housby. Eight, nine to two in this final quarter from the New South Wales Swifts for the difference. The best thing that the Swifts can do right now is stay in play. Keep creating pressure. Yes, you just missed that one with Plough, but stay in play. Sam Pullman, what have you got? I love it when I uh, tell goalkeepers to get the ball in Maddie Turner and we look at the stats now and Swifts have actually had possession of the ball 71% of the time compared to 29. So we told them they needed to get the ball back and here we are. Well, that is a big difference in percentage, isn't it? Well, yeah, a little late. So Olivia Lewis has been brought into the mix. M Mannix, after such a blinder of the first half, has been found out. And that is the indication of a quality side, isn't it? Really trying to work out how to get around a player that's beating you. They've done that. Ed Mannix has gone to the bench. Sophie Fawns up for the challenge. The energy in this stadium is electrifying. You can feel the Swifts are starting to really build here. They know how to win games like this. So you can't underestimate it. Good swing to the top, though, to Maloney, but no one else is available. It's got to go to Watson, and again across to Maloney. So Sarah Clow and Maddie Turner have picked up the defence inside the circle. Well, Watson, just a bit easy for Watson on that top of the circle. Can wonder at the beginning of the game would have shot that ball. Absolutely, but she has Sarah Clow on her the last couple of times. And just the presence, the extra height, I think is starting to put a bit more doubt into the minds of the feeders. And as we can see, they're all on one side at the moment. Smith's doing a great job. Oh, Clow so close on that one. Yeah, I thought she had that. The ball placement wasn't good, was it? Good opportunity for Clow. But just a little clumsy in the contest. So Kumwenda, another to her tally, 38 from 39. 
Fraser, proud. Oh, Fawns towards the in and out. And there is the all-important siren. We are now in power five. So the Suncorp super shots in play. They are worth two from right here. Well, Fawns didn't want to take it. It'll be interesting to see how the Vixens defenders, just like that, do they just allow the one to keep ticking over? It means that these Swiss defenders need a few more balls. Well, they're not in the position they were before where they're forced into it, are they? It's a much closer game now. Eddie Watson. You see still only one option from the Vixens in attack. Watson again. Oh, wow, gosh, she had to turn herself inside out to take it. Couldn't gather the Swifts on their way. Absolutely flying down court between Proud and Fraser. Watson causing the penalty. Gives the defenders a bit of a break. Proud forms to Fraser. Well, she's got to get up before she passes the ball. The unfortunate thing was that she moved her feet when she was on the floor. But you'll see that jump on. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Probably do. Here we go again, the Vixens all on one side, Swifts. And to be honest, Swifts aren't really dictating them there. They're just right on there. They all just want the ball so much. Yeah, it's very crowded, isn't it? You could throw a net over the top of them at the moment. Rani Samerson, that would have been a huge shot. Chose for the pass off. And the one pointer from Kamwenda. So still five the difference. But only five goals scored from the Melbourne Vixens in this quarter. That is quite amazing. Who knows to the Swiss defenders? Look at that. Oh, I know. And what if they get them to Kamwenda? And we've only really seen her throw it off once. But that's the confidence in that Vixens front end and where we're at at the moment. Great the ball, yeah. Beautiful touch ball over the top. And Fraser just had a beautiful placement on it. She just got it nice and high. It wasn't an overhead pass and placed it beautifully for Fawns. Well, New South Wales Swifts, if they can get a turnover here and score, their centre pass to follow, they can get it back to two. But they need one of their Diamonds defenders to step up here. Who's going to do it? Who's it going to come from? Oh, Bronnie Aker, who would coach, honestly? <laughs> What's the name McInnes? She looks very stressed. Swifts are running out of time here uh, to be able to catch up, so I think they really need to start injecting this super shot here from well, Helen Housby. It's got to sink, doesn't it? It doesn't, it's a pass. I say it's a pass. True shooter. <laughs> But yeah, nothing coming again, and they need to score. Well, contact. look at that. Isn't that interesting? And doesn't that just tell you the tale of the yeah. game? Ten super shot attempts contact for the Swifts because they've had no the choice. Trees. And sitting at 40%. Well, Helen Housby does the job. It's back to three. Who's got the ticker for this last one and a half minutes if the Swifts can get a turnover? Melbourne Vixens really on the flip side just need to keep their cool, keep possession, much like Joe Harton did last week when she tormented with them. Wasted the time on the clock. We'll just take that one. Yeah, smart, smart work from the Melbourne Vixens for the buffer with a minute left in play. Still plenty of time, and there's a Suncorp super shot in the game. And they just need to get it down there. Their second phase has just gone off the boil a little bit. Helen Housby, super shot. Well, it doesn't matter, though, because the penalty's come, so she'll get another shot at it. And Olivia Lewis. Well, that was a very important rebound. If she's done nothing else but that rebound to keep the Swifts at bay, then it's been a good performance. And Samerson, well, that's probably the ball game. Uh, Suncorp super shot and the centre pass to follow for the Melbourne Vixens. They've got themselves out by six again in the blink of an eye. A disappointing finish for the Swifts in this one. 
a but lot of heart shown though. Absolutely, and it's a very similar game and last quarter to what the Vixens faced last week against the Queensland Firebirds, wasn't it? The Firebirds came steamrolling back at them and they just had to hold them off. Now, six seconds left on the clock. What can Fourth do? Well, she's done nearly everything else. There it is. The final whistle and the Melbourne Vixens have one hand on the Sergeant McInnes Cup. They also continue their path of turning that wooden spoon into a golden one with their second straight win of this 2022 season.